to be the part of this first ever webinar uh, which has been conducting by uh, by the anarok and services for nri for godrej properties limited uh, so i would uh, like to just uh, introduce our uh, the speakers uh, who are the part of key people who are going to be there so we have uh, a pravir gill uh, who heads uh, international market for godrej property limited pravir would you like to say hi Hi everyone. Thanks, Praveen. Uh, Thank you for that. Uh, we have uh, Parag Jha, uh, who heads business head for the uh, UK USA for Godrej Properties Limited. Uh, hi, Parag. Welcome back. Hi, me here. Thanks. How are you all? Welcome. Thanks. Thanks. So, and uh, we have uh, uh, Sajay Jacob, uh, who is a CEO uh, GCC for Anurag Property Consultants. Hi, Sajay. Hi, thanks, 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 uh, uh, all of us uh, we, to be the part of this webinar. So now quickly, I'll just introduce uh, Anarok. Anarok Property Consultant uh, is uh, India's largest uh, property consultant. Uh, they use underlying prop tech technology to do a digital transaction. In today's world, everyone wants to do it because of social distancing and people can't visit it. But Anarok is the first pioneer to set up uh, everything on digitally end to end digital experience can be uh, done through anarok so with uh, amazing and they have uh, exclusive mandate and they are the strategic partner for godrej properties limited uh, for across their projects today we are talking about only bangalore but uh, they have across their project they have a mandate and not only with the uh, godrej but anarok is also uh, have a exclusive mandate and strategic partner for all a grade developer pan india so feel free to contact sajay or me for any of this help uh, now services for nri uh, is a uk based company uh, we are uh, i am the director of the company i am irsha and uh, we have been established over 8 years in uk and we help nris and ocis in uk and europe to do the property transaction back home in india and we also assist to get oci card pan card filing tax return a lot of other property management services as well uh, now uh, i also would like to introduce about the godrej properties the godrej property is uh, one of the leading developer in india uh, they have the only one who have a pan present pan india presence uh, in you know, almost major cities uh, across india they have they are into real estate for last 30 years and they have delivered numerous projects uh, and they have lot of about 30 or projects currently going across pan india so uh, godrej properties and a godrej group requires no introduction uh, now i'll uh, see the flow of the webinar is going to be uh, sajay who is going to cover about the indian real estate uh, praveer is going to go about godrej properties uh, and uh, the uh, prarag is going to talk about the bangalore market and then if you feel free to put up all the questions which you have and we will answer those questions sajay to you guys Thank you, Mehir. Thanks for uh, the introduction. Um, you know, warm welcome to everyone, uh, wherever you are. Good, good afternoon, good evening, uh, and uh, thank you, Praveer and the Godrej team for uh, coming on to this webinar. Um, so today I'm going to uh, actually talk about uh, what's Indian real estate um, all about, what it's been through, uh, where has the journey been, uh, and what are the investment opportunities that we have? Um, and of course, um, introduce you to um, a really lucrative offering from Godrej Properties, which talks about investments, um, especially in these challenging times. So it'd be pretty strange to talk about investments when everyone's talking about savings, but um, you know, Praveer and his team are actually going to outline why those investments are in today's times more lucrative than, you know, uh, looking at just saving liquidity. So uh, without um, you know, spending any further time on this, I'm going to jump straight to what is Indian real estate uh, going through right now, um, where it is, where it was, uh, and what is the future? So if you look at a timeline between 2008 and 2020, and we divide it into uh, certain sections, between 2008 and uh, 15, uh, the industry, localized so you had developers who were um, just localized in maybe in even in micro markets of bangalore bombay pune um, you had uh, you know markets which were primarily driven by landlords or or you know land owners 
and these landowners dictated what the price was, what the quality was, what would be the service guarantee, and what the eventual end product would be. But in the fag end of 2015, we actually saw the entry of a few corporate houses, which actually tried to monetize their land um, you know, assets and set up real estate development houses. Cut to 2016 uh, to 2020, the last five years that we've actually seen, the industry has become regulated. There have been certainly the maximum number of disruptive events or measures uh, being put in either by the government or, you know, these have been economic uh, com compulsions which have happened. Um, there has been consolidation. Some of the smaller developers, the developers who operated in micro markets, some of those landowners who have been taken over by the larger developers or these corporate houses. There has been certainly a, a progress towards making the sector a bit more efficient. But having said that, the scale has been um, limited. It has never, there has never been uh, the large corporate developer looking at large developments uh, across India, except for one or two. So, and we see beyond 2020, uh, which I will come to in a, in a short while, but before that, I'd like to, uh, you know, talk about what were those disruptive measures. I would say the biggest has been the formation of the RERA, which is the Real Estate Regulatory Act, which brought in the maximum amount of transparency, minimized the construction risk, and actually gave power in the hand of the consumer, which was missing till date. And that I think is one of the biggest game changers that Indian real estate has actually been witness to. Demonetization, the effect of GST, the liquidity crisis, which was more of an economic compulsion, the bank scams, which actually came into play, uh, the defaults, and of course, the recent COVID-19 outbreak, all of this has led to, and we will see it even more happening, the elimination of weaker players, large skin consolidation, and more um, entry of uh, large corporate houses. What do we see in the next five years? Um, I would say that the sector will become more regulated, uh, far more consolidated. There will be just a few players, stronger players, focused on construction and quality. Uh, and of course, a new breed of developers. For example, you will have developers who will possibly look at concept houses, concept properties. You could have a brand of property which could be there across major micro markets. So for example, you will have a Godrej come out with a nurture in Bangalore and a nurture in Pune, which is a concept development across markets where they offer the same quality price, uh, might not necessarily be the price, but the same quality um, as well as the same kind of amenities across a project. So there will be consumers who will want to look at these branded concepts. So India is certainly moving towards more corporatization, more transparency, which augurs well for the industry. If I can go to the next slide, Mihir. Um, what is um, happening on the sales front uh, between 2016, um, or if I say between 2015 to 2020, uh, you can see this uh, slide. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a whole lot of bars that we see. But if I want to flesh out these bars and explain them, the green bars stand for supply and the red bars stand for absorption. When you say absorption, it means sales. If you see in the first um, few quarters of from 2015 onwards, this, the supply was extremely high and the sales was never matching up to the supply, which meant that there was a very high um, unsold inventory. So a lot of houses went a begging without sales, but cut to the last few quarters and the last, even the last few four years, if you can look at it, uh, 16 quarters, you can actually see that the green bars are lower than the orange bars or the red bars, which actually mean that sales has been overshooting the supply, which is actually a great indicator that if the economic compulsions of supply and demand come into play, that there will be a gradual inching northward of prices. And each of these, um, if you see each of these, um, here if you can go back to the previous slide, each of these um, you know, sales junctures have been accompanied by those disruptive measures that I've actually mentioned, whether it's been RERA, demonetization, the GST implementation, 
all of these have actually contributed in some certain manner to sales becoming higher than the supply. If you see the, the purple dots, which have actually started, you know, increasing from 2015 onwards and moving down to towards 2020, that means the unsold inventory, which was there from the previous years, has actually started coming down lower, which implies that if unsold inventory comes lower, sales is more than the supply or the new launches, it automatically means that over the next few years, we will see prices inching northwards. Um, there is a question which I, and we will take questions later on in this um, you know, event, in this webinar. Uh, but the fact is that someone's asked me right now, what does absorption mean? Absorption means sales. Uh, and what is the source? The source is basically the proprietary data that Anarok tracks across 14 cities in India, across all top A grade launches which happen in a particular year. Meher, if you can look at the uh, next slide. Meher, do you want to go to the next slide? Uh, the next slide, Mir. Mir, you're going in the reverse order. We just just go in the forward order. Thank you. Thanks, Mir. So, um, since the today the theme of today's um, webinar was on uh, Bangalore real estate, um, we wanted to spend some time on understanding what is Bangalore real estate and and, and where is Bangalore real estate uh, moving. I made the previous slide, please, which is uh, the slide on sales and absorption in Bangalore. Sorry, I think Mihir has got disconnected. Uh, Mihir, if you can just put the presentation back. I'm sorry for that. Thank you, Mary. Let's go to slide number eight. Slide number eight. Yeah, on Bangalore. Not on the. Yeah. Let's go to the slide on Bangalore, uh, which actually talks about sales and absorption in Bangalore. Thank you. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, technical glitches. Uh, The slide after that, after this, Mahir. Thank you. So if I look at Bangalore residential, what's happening in this city? Very interesting to note that if you see the blue bars and the green bars, the blue bars are actually talking about supply. These are all the new launches that have been happening in the city. The green bars are the sales bars. So the green bars actually talk about how many units have been sold in a particular year. If you see from 2013 to 2016, the supply side was far more dominant than the sales side, which meant that there was going to be a lot of unsold inventory. But surprisingly, from 2017 onwards, this city has actually self-corrected and has actually seen lower supply and higher sales. And higher sales has actually resulted in unsold inventory coming down. If the laws of supply and demand are anything to be considered, we are definitely looking at the next few years of price increases in the city of Bangalore, purely on the basis of this slide. And again, this slide captures data from all the residential launches and the registrations of sales records uh, from uh, you know the city, uh, and this is tracked proprietary by our Anarok team. Thank you. Uh, 
Thanks, Meer. Next slide. So why should you buy a house? I mean, there's a, there's a whole theory about why you shouldn't buy a house, but here we're actually going to uh, talk about why you should buy a house. House is a physical asset. Uh, a home is a physical asset uh, and serves a dual purpose. There is no other investment which serves a dual purpose of creating a physical asset, living and renting it, as of course, you know, enjoying the capital returns uh, which come in from such an investment. Um, we believe that it is far better than uh, any kind of virtual or paper money, uh, which is uh, in today's times the stock market. The, and, and given the way that the Indian stock markets have been reacting and the retail investors, the poor run that they are facing, the value of property and house is never wiped out totally, uh, unlike uh, what's the carnage that's been happening in the stock market uh, recently. Purchasing a house with mortgage gives you tax returns uh, and tax benefits. Um, and this is especially relevant for NRIs who have got Indian income, especially relevant to offset the income from any sources that an NRI makes in India. A mortgage does give you an income tax rebate. Uh, living on rent, uh, you know, of course, does not uh, help create an asset. And, you know, like I personally believe that uh, uh, paying rent is actually paying someone else's uh, EMI. And, of course, in today's times, the social security of, it, of uh, you know, owning a house. I mean, I'm sure there might have been a lot of people who are far more benefited than who are owning houses than those who are staying on rent, uh, especially in these work from time, work from home times. Maybe. Is now the right time to buy a house? Uh, let's look at it and then let's, let's look at it very pragmatically. COVID-19 is only a medical crisis. It's not a financial crisis. The markets have not come down. The economy has not come down because of any, you know, hypothetical financial crisis like it happened in 2008 because of the global, uh, you know, concern which happened in the US. Uh, it's a medical crisis. There is going to be a vaccine which will come out sooner than later. And when that vaccine comes back, markets are going to come back to the normal. There is going to be a fast J curve. And when that fast J curve happens, there is going to be a lot of demand, which is going to come out in the open. So the savvy investor who invests right now is going to be able to take advantage of this crisis. The government, the Indian government, the RBI, the central bank, they've all simulated the economy. There's been a 20 lakh crore infusion. And we will see the benefits of this 20 lakh crore over the next few quarters. And as you well know, any kind of fiscal stimulus, is the results of those are never seen immediately. It always pans out over the next few quarters. And we will see that happening. The need for a larger house, of course, has been felt, especially in this lockdown. And as work from home becomes, you know, the new normal. Um, I um, work in Dubai. I stay in Dubai. The, what we are seeing right now in Dubai is that there are, because of this crisis, because of this uh, downturn, because of this lockdown, you know, and of course, subsequent lockdown, there has been a, a, a trend of migration from smaller homes to larger homes. And we are going to see the same trend in migration in India because people are going to start working digitally. Organizations are going to move seats to homes. And therefore, when work from home becomes the new norm, there will be requirement of additional space. Interest rates are at a record low. I've never seen interest rates at such a low level. I mean, in SBI, HDFC, Indusind, all of which are operating at, at, at about approximately seven, seven and a half percent. The good part is that prices in India have never over, been over the top. Their prices never rose extremely high over the last few years. It's always been inching northwards, but it's always been range brown. And therefore, this is a great time to actually capitalize on these current prices. There is a plethora of options which have opened up. Uh, you know, there are lots of unsold units. Uh, there are lots of developers who are coming out with launch products at attractive prices with great payment schemes. And which is actually a natural segue into my next point of what Godrej is offering, which is, um, you know, deals that have never been seen before. And this is only being offered during this COVID crisis and this lockdown period, which will, of course, be uh, spoken about by Praveen in my next, uh, you know, section of the presentation. 
So Anarok actually um, runs a consumer sentiment index uh, and a consumer sentiment research. So we ran this consumer sentiment research uh, just prior to and during the lockdown period uh, to figure out what's the end consumer talking about. Uh, what is their pulse? What's the pulse of the customer when we're looking at real estate? And these are all buyers and investors just like you all. So if I go through these eight points, you will see as to what these are almost all of them are looking at purchasing. Almost all of them are sitting on the sidelines. They're sitting on the fence and they want to enter. And very interestingly will be the feedback on millennials who we all thought was the gig economy, wouldn't want to really invest, uh, you know, prefer to rent. So uh, coming back to the first point, 48% of our respondents said amongst all of the investment assets, residential is still the best investment option. Millennials who we looked at from a perspective of saying they are the gig economy, they wouldn't really want to invest. Surprisingly, in these times, 55% uh, of them said they prefer to buy. 62% of prospective buyers prefer to buy from branded and leading developers, which actually mitigates the construction risk, the financial risk, and the eventual risk of not getting a home delivered to their satisfaction. So 62% of them prefer to stay with a brand. And that is the reason why today we bring to you a branded developer called Godrej Properties. 73% of respondents are in favor of affordable and mid-segment priced homes. Again, the products that we are going to talk about in the latter part of the presentation are in this segment. Of course, 54% of our respondents uh, considered that the ideal time to buy a home was now. 59% uh, of home buyers are looking to buy a property for end use, which automatically the corollary is that 41% are for investment and 41% for investment is not a small number. So are you today amongst that 41%? That is the question that you need to answer. 72% of the buyers still prefer to buy property, even though there is a COVID crisis, even though there is a financial uh, crisis out there with jobs getting lost, with, with salary cuts, wage reduction, people being put on furloughs, still 72% of buyers have still not changed their investment plan. 84% of buyers who booked during this lockdown period and Praveen will come to a very interesting statistic um, of how much they have sold in this lockdown period. 84% of them will continue with their home purchases, the, the tokens that they have given, the bookings that they have made, the expressions of interest that they have actually put in with no cancellation on their mind. So it's very interesting if you see all of these uh, cumulative uh, factors or, or insights from our cons consumer sentiment index, you'll actually make out that it's not all gloom and doom for the sector. And now I'll want to move on to the next part of our presentation, which is on brand Godrej, and I'll introduce uh, Praveer. I don't think there's anyone else better than him to do justice to this part of the presentation. And uh, you know, uh, he will then uh, entrust it to the rest of his team to talk about the kind of products that we've outline to you. Good afternoon, evening, uh, depending on where you're joining from. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, today. One of the most important aspects during uh, this medical crisis is to ensure a medical crisis is not an economic or a financial crisis, which is why the economic activity should continue and uh, will always continue. So my very uh, large thanks to uh, Anarok and services for NRI for being part of uh, an, uh, an initiative where the economic activity continues. Now, taking you through Godrej, Godrej really needs no introduction. It's a 123-year-old brand, but Godrej Properties was established in 1990, 30 years back. We're present, we're one of those rare developers who's present across uh, the Indian geography and uh, has a huge number of projects across these geographies. So we're present in 10 cities, uh, from ranging from Chandigarh, uh, to Cal uh, Calcutta, uh, from Ahmedabad to Chennai, Bangalore, Mumbai, Pune. Uh, in NCR, we're present across uh, four geographies in NCR, which is Delhi, uh, Noida, uh, Gurgaon, and Faridabad. So we've got a large presence and we've got a huge number of projects in most of these locations. So if I have to specifically talk about, say, for example, in Pune, where we're present, where the number one developer 
in terms of revenues and sales, number of units sold, the revenues generated. In Mumbai, we're among the top five. In Bangalore, we're among the top five. In NCR, we're again the number one developer. In Ahmedabad, we're the number one developer. So wherever we are, in most of these cities, we're either bang, bang on top as number one developer or we're among the top five. Comparative cities like Bangalore, we're among the top five. We fluctuate between three, two, and four, uh, depending on how what is the kind of launches we've had. The other big thing is when we're talking about economic activity continuing, uh, we were probably the only developer that did launches during this entire period. So uh, we went ahead and uh, did three launches during the entire lockdown period. Meet if you can go back to the slides where we're starting with Godrej. Uh, so we did three uh, uh, launches uh, during the lockdown period to ensure economic activity continues and uh, and that we are doing business. The economy is continuing. Real estate is selling, and we have three launches actually planned. Something that we hold really dear is the fact that. Uh, we have received uh, the award for the most trusted real estate brand. And it goes without saying, Godrej as a brand itself is among the most trusted brand. We've become a large real estate brand where uh, the number one publicly listed developer for the last five years now. And we've got a huge brand presence. But what we hold most dear is that we are the most trust trusted real estate brand. 2019 Brand Trust Report. Meet if we can move to the next slide. I think have we lost Mir again? No, we've, we've gone too far ahead. Hello, I'm here. Yes, Hello. Mir. Uh, if we can, okay. So Mir, uh, so uh, largely uh, we've, uh, we've uh, successfully developed about uh, 20 million uh, square feet of real estate in the last five years. 188 million square feet of developable area across India. 16 successful launches last year, out of which uh, two of them were during the lockdown period. And we sold 500 units in just March during the lockdown period because we were doing launches, we were actively selling, we did not back down, we chose to go online to ensure that uh, as, uh, as a developer, we are present there and we are still doing business. So we sold 500 units. I will also go further, Meer, if we can go further. So we've continued to launch products uh, through this period. We have three further launches also. Uh, we're a 123-year-old legacy. On the 7th of May, we complete, actually completed 123 years as Godrej uh, Group. So during the entire lockdown period, Hello. which is from the 16th March to the 31st May. Hello. Yes, Mir, we can hear you. So we've sold Hello. 850 units in the international markets alone. So our, uh, the uh, NRI audience has purchased about 850 apartments from uh, Godrej properties between the 16th of March to the 31st of May, which shows the kind of extent of economic activity that we continue to generate. Can you guys hear me? Parag, Sajay, if you can confirm. Yes, yes, we can, we can, yes, we can. So, Meer, yes, if we can go, go to the next slide. Meer, if you are having uh, trouble, okay. So during this entire lockdown period, uh, we've uh, come up with uh, um, ways and means of making real estate purchase easier, simpler for our customers, decision making uh, at a much easier level. Me, do you want me to share the presentation? Yeah, Praveer, I think it'll be better if you share the presentation. I think me is having a bit of a problem. I think it'll be better if you share the presentation. Yes. So we've uh, basically uh, run, been running a campaign called Hope as a Plan, 
under which uh, we've tried to give our customers the kind of flexibility that uh, they would want to be able to buy a home they wish to buy, uh, to be able to invest in real estate uh, that gives them uh, wonderful returns. We've come up with a plan where we say you need to pay 10% at this point of time to lock into an uh, apartment with Godrej properties, which is a small investment at this point of time. And we said the balance 90% is as per your convenience. So the plan free, but we've actually come up with a scheme where we say as per your convenience. So when, when the economic activity gets more certain, when life is more certain, uh, when we found a vaccine uh, and COVID is vanished from our minds and you're more comfortable making payments, that is when you have to make the rest of the payments. So what we've done is our plan is basically a 1090 plan where we say 10% you pay at booking and 90% on delivery. But there is also a flexibility that we offer that in case you do want to come out before delivery and want to park those funds with us, say the 90% or maybe a portion of it. So you have 40% and you say, okay, uh, Praveer, I have this 40%. Can I park it with you? Could, would I get a benefit? Yes, you would get about 8 to 9% return per annum on anything that you park with us once you're comfortable to park. But your obligation to pay is only on delivery. So we've, we've tried to make a very comfortable plan. We've been running this plan ever since lockdown has happened. And it's given us huge success. Like I said, 850 uh, units is what we've sold just in the international market. And, and we wish to continue with launches. So we've, we've got three more planned launches that are coming. Uh, one in Bangalore, uh, one in uh, NCR, one in Pune. And we're not going to stop. So as soon as these three launches are done, we've got the roadmap for another three soon coming. Lockdown, no lockdown. Gotrich Properties will continue to sell. Uh, coming to uh, uh, Bangalore. So Bangalore, uh, obviously, is one of the largest real estate destinations in our country. It's largely because the way the city has developed in the last 20 years, from being uh, from not being one of the four large key metros, at that point of time, it was Chennai, Mumbai, Kolkata, Delhi. Bangalore has emerged as the IT hub, the technology hub, and it has emerged as a modern cosmopolitan city. So it is a very cosmopolitan city compared to Kolkata, compared to Delhi, compared to uh, 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 even Chennai for that matter. So it has emerged as an IT hub where there's a huge mix of culture and there's various reasons why one should probably invest uh, in Bangalore. One of the large reasons is uh, it was ranked as one of the best places to live and work in 2018 by an international uh, forum. It is the Silicon Valley of India. India, it's the uh, IT hub, the biotech hub, the uh, pharmaceutical hub, manufacturing, e-commerce. It has been ranked second on the global startup index. So you can imagine it is, uh, that is why we call it Silicon Valley, right? Maybe Silicon Valley was ranked number one and uh, Bangalore was ranked number two. A huge number of IT startups uh, that, and not, not only IT, non-IT startups also uh, uh, start in Bangalore. It's called world-class infrastructure. It's called high-tech defense and aerospace park. Uh, it's got the new international airport. But very specifically, there are two uh, key areas that I would uh, focus on if I was an investor in Bangalore. One is largely in and around the IT hub, where we probably have a, a, quite a few of our projects, which is uh, Eternity, Reflections, Godrich ECT, Godrich Nurture. In fact, Godrej Nurture is a product that we uh, launched just before the lockdown. And as we stand today, that's a project that's 100% sold out. So in three months, the entire project, the entire phase that we launched got sold out. And this sellout happened during the lockdown. That is, uh, so that is the beauty of the uh, electronic city uh, kind of project. So when you have a project in and around electric, electro, electronic city, it sells quite fast. The second large hub is North Bangalore, which is the entire stretch between uh, the city of Bangalore to the new airport that's developed on the north of Bangalore. That is an area that will develop, which is, which is very natural, which is for any city across the globe. Uh, once a large airport, an international airport is built, there's a huge amount of development that happens between the city and the airport, that stretch. 
and which is why you will see a lot of projects. Uh, so we ourselves have projects called Avenues, Royal Woods, Reserve, Aqua, Platinum, all in the in the area which is North Bangalore, right towards the airport. So I think those are two uh, key investment destinations. East City, the electronic city where the IT hub is, and towards the uh, new Bangalore airport. So uh, from Bangalore city to the airport, that entire stretch. Today, most of these places, uh, because they're being developed, you've got good prices that you're getting deals at. Uh, there's a uh, good amount of deals. In fact, with Godrej Properties Rao, the 1090 plan is a fantastic opportunity to buy into uh, these products because three to four years down the line, all of this, these two specific areas, so uh, will develop. And at this point of time, somebody is making investment in real estate, you really have to look at location, which, which has always been the thumb rule of real estate. Location is the number one criteria. And if you look at the right location and you invest in a location which is upcoming, so anything between Bangalore to the airport is definitely upcoming. There's no two ways about it. You invest there three to five years later, that area is going to give you a return that you would want to desire. So, so Praveen, uh, yes. So, so Praveen, there are two point, two two things that I wanted to also bring in about Bangalore. You know, from an, more from an investor perspective. Right. One is that um, you know, with this new digital evolution, almost all organizations, large organizations, large tech companies which are sprouting globally, are looking for right. consumer markets. And India is a huge potent consumer market. Correct. The, each of these digitally led organizations, and now most organizations are led digitally. I mean, gone are the days of you know traditional brick and mortar companies. So when they're looking at a sprouting an office or putting in a, you know a branch in India, the first city that they look at is Bangalore, because sure. it has talent, it has engineering talent, it has digital talent, and it has a lot of um, you know talent from the rest of South India who flock to this one major city. Right. So Bangalore becomes a very natural hub for any kind of corporate uh, investment. And it competes with just two other markets, which is either a Bombay or a Gurgaon. But if you look at it from a perspective of attractiveness to business, Jones Lang LaSalle, which is a large global uh, property consulting firm, every year comes out with its attractiveness index for business and it qualifies major cities globally. Bangalore forms the plinth of that ranking and it comes between one and two, a first place or second place and has been consistently doing well over the last five years. So no one can take away that Bangalore is an extremely attractive place for investors looking to set up corporate houses or for uh, international organizations looking to set up a branch and more so in these times when all of us are moving digitally. True. And that is the reason why Bangalore becomes a huge haven for investor-led activity. I, I completely agree with you. Economic activity is the real reason real estate develops. Whether it's Gurgaon, whether it's Mumbai, or whether it's Bangalore. Bangalore really developed when IT made base there. And that is, that is, that is the reason why any city across the globe will develop. Uh, Silicon example, Valley for that matter. Just for an example, when Amazon wanted to set up its global outsourcing center, uh, Amazon wasn't in, in, in India. Uh, in 2012, when Amazon wanted to set up its global outsourcing center in India, it chose Bangalore. True. It didn't choose any other city. I don't see a reason why they wouldn't, wouldn't choose Bangalore. Yeah. Okay, so going, going further, I request uh, Parag to take us uh, through our projects in Bangalore. Thanks, Praveer. Thanks, Ajay. Uh, you know, to take take us through, uh, you know, what's what's happening in Bangalore, what's happening in real estate, and how's the tech sector been behaving, uh, and 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 some some data points around that. Uh, I'm sure now, uh, till now, everybody is aware and 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 is uh, you know of the same opinion that Godrej as a company has its vision very clear that we want to be the market leaders in one of the top four cities where we are present in. And uh, as, as Praveer rightly mentioned that uh, we are number one in, in Pune and NCR with the top three ratings in, in uh, cities like Mumbai and Bangalore, which clearly shows that we are outperforming the market. Uh, as you can see from our previous slide that mentions, the bang mentions Bangalore as one of the fastest growing cities in India, 
Uh, Bangalore for us also has been one of the most diversified portfolio uh, with the property prices ranging from uh, as low as 30 lakhs to about 4 crores across the property spectrum in the region. Uh, our position timelines can cater to someone who's looking at something that is as near to possession or, or probably uh, is ready to move in to something which is over three, three and a half years as well. Uh, I'll just, uh, uh, you know, take you through a couple of our projects in Bangalore briefly and talk about them. One of the first projects, as you can see it in your screen, is, is Reserve. Our first plotted development, which is about 20 minutes from Bangalore International Airport. This, this project is spread across 92 acres of land with almost 14 acres of landscaping and greens and about six acres of forest experience. This thousand plot development is extremely low density projects with about just 10 plots per acre. Some of the most eye catching features include two large clubhouses, uh, badminton and squash courts, library, mini theater, play terrace, banquet room, cafe, uh, you know, to, to just name a few. Before we move on to, uh, you know, uh, our next project, I would like to just highlight the development in North Bangalore, which is actually making this project highly acceptable to the buyers. Devanahalli as a region is transforming into a major IT hub, which will employ over 300,000 jobs over the next two years. Boeing and Airbus are setting up their second largest plant after Seattle in Aerospace Park, which is just a southernmost boundary of uh, Bangalore International Airport. Other companies like Wipro, Shell, uh, etc. have started their uh, work on, uh, you know, setting up their offices uh, in and around this development. Now, uh, uh, we, we have, we have uh, four, about four or five configurations uh, uh, in, in, in this uh, development, starting from 64 uh, lakhs, which is uh, for, a, for a 30 by 50 plot, to about a crore and a half uh, for, for, for 40 by 80 plots. Uh, the possession timelines is close to January 2021, which is very close, and we are still offering 1090 plan uh, in, 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 in this development. I think Parag, uh, something, some, something about reserve that is special is a lot of people that I speak to tell me that if you want to invest in real estate, plots is the way to go. Plots give you the kind of appreciation that uh, maybe a flat or a home does not actually give you. And, and it is true, land investment, plot investment is actually fantastically good. But for NRIs, the large thought behind not buying a plot or a piece of land has been land sharks. Can you trust that your prop plot will remain uh, where it is? Will somebody take care of it? Will somebody go and look at it at uh, every point of time? Uh, can you be 100% sure that after 10 years that plot belongs to you? It's not that uh, somebody's encroached it, somebody's taken it away, you don't know where it is, the boundary's been moved. With Godrej, this is a large opportunity for NRI buyers to buy with a brand like Godrej where there is a guarantee that you're investing into a plot, which is a good investment to do, but you're doing it with a brand like Godrej. So we guarantee you there's going to be no land shark. This is going to be your plot. It's going to be registered in your name. You come build it when you want. It's going to, the boundaries are going to be managed. It is a project that's going to be delivered by us. It's going to be a gated community and no chance of any land shark, you losing out. It's a hundred percent safe investment in a plot, which which is rare, and which most customers do look at, and especially NRIs, they're wary of land and plots because flats is a safe investment. Absolutely, I I completely agree with that. Uh, uh, moving on to our next project that I'll be just discussing is. Um, is uh, avenues this is a five acre land parcel with, uh, with with about 14 floor towers a configuration starting from one two three bedroom it is extremely conveniently located in the main um, yelanka uh, main road very good connectivity across the road to international airport which is just about 30 minutes road outer ring road is very close by uh, one of the key features of this project is that it's 75% of uh, the project is open and green uh, of 14 stories with, with just four units per floor. Uh, again, makes it a very low density project. Uh, uh, the, one of the key amenities uh, of this project is that it caters to all age groups and around all, all around development of this, uh, of, of all the people and the families staying in. 
from entertainment centers to indoor sports, health and fitness to retail spaces, pharmacies, supermarket, grocery, sky lounges, you name it and you have it. Again, the project has uh, uh, one, two, two and a half configurations starting from 54 lakhs to about 80, 85 lakhs. The possession is around December 2021, offering 1090 plan on that. Uh, and if you move to the next slide, it'll, uh, you know, basically give you highlights about, uh, uh, you know, both of these projects that I've discussed uh, and, uh, and, and then the kind of configurations that we have. Though we have uh, multiple projects in Bangalore, I thought, uh, you know, I'll just co cover a couple of uh, projects in North Bangalore and I'm happy to take any questions, uh, uh, you know, for, for any other, other uh, projects in Bangalore as well. So, yeah, amazing. That looks really amazing. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, everyone and especially uh, Sajai uh, to covering the uh, what Indian real estate and what is Indian real has gone through and how we are changing the Indian real estate. And it's a going for it's going in a good uh, right direction. There is a lot of transformation happening in Indian real estate. And it's a good for especially for NRI customers uh, because there is a lot of transparency is getting up in Indian real estate. And again, uh, thank you very much, Parag and Praveer, uh, to be the part of Godrej Properties. And uh, you know, Godrej Properties has always been a number one developer in in and every, every part of India. So some of the questions we have already gathered while the registration. So I have those. I have those noted down. Those questions with me. Uh, and uh, the, the first question, um, uh, the I have a very interesting question, and I can ask to Praveer. Praveer. Yes. Uh, the one other question uh, they have asked is this the best time for nri to invest in indian real estate and uh, if yes and uh, then why with godrej so would you like to take up this thing correct see uh, yes absolutely so i it if you ask me honestly it is it is probably the best time to invest in uh, real estate at this point of time largely because over the last 8 to 9 years real estate have, prices have been Either come some markets they've dropped, some markets they've been stagnated. But if you look at, uh, and some markets they've also risen a little bit. But if you add inflation to it, you will actually see that inflationary prices would have actually dropped. So we've, uh, from where inflation is gone in the last eight years, real estate prices have not moved up uh, similarly. So there has been a lot of stagnation. This largely happened, which Sajay has covered in his presentation, was due to a high supply in. Uh, about eight to nine years back till about five years back, there was a high supply and yeah. the absorption was low. Correct. RERA came in and RERA changed that entire RERA or demonetization. There were various things that happened. But yeah. all of these, what they've done is there were a huge number of small developers. Somebody had a little, little land parcel and he would become a developer and he would launch a project and sell some products. What has happened in demonetization and then by uh, RERA coming in, is that there is a huge amount of consolidation that's happened, which automatically meant the sheer number of developers have reduced. Yeah. Uh, the people who are developing are far lower. The yeah. the bandwidth is lower. There is less amount of uh, a less amount of inventory supply that's coming, and it right. is slowly at this point of time that absorption has actually started moving beyond the supply that is available. Perfect. So you suddenly realize another one or one year, I'm saying not even one year, maybe very soon, you will see that uh, the unsown inventory will hit levels which are very favorable for developers. Correct. Even today, last three months, I have not seen prices go down. I saw prices go down last one year, but in the last three months of lockdown, prices have literally not dropped. Okay. People have given, people have given some schemes. Uh, uh, they've been attractive, some have not been attractive, but prices have not dropped dramatically, which most consumers have waited for. Okay. But the fact is unsold inventory is so low right now that no yeah. developer wants to drop their price. Correct. He has to just, he stops his launch. So launches are very few. We are one of the rare developers who are doing launches at this time. So that okay. is very dropped. So that makes it the right time to buy. Why okay. Godrich? Because of the 1090 scheme that we're giving you. We're giving right. you that comfort to wait those three years when your possession comes to actually pay the balance 90%, you will see how the market is going, how the market is behaving. We give you all that comfort from that standpoint. Sure. So which is why you should look at Godrej. And we as a developer are extremely cash rich. We're sitting on cash. 
So unlike, uh, we can afford to give a 1090, which is why we want to give a 1090. We've always been an organization that is looked forward to how we can help a consumer, how we can help uh, uh, our uh, 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 loyalty customers understand how they how they want to buy, what can we do. And this is the scheme that we thought would best fit in at this time. And we could afford it and we've given it. And this won't last. As soon as the lockdown is over, we'll want to yeah, get no, into I... products that give us cash flows. Yes, that's it. That's true. Uh, Parag, I can see the, 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 the project which you have covered for the Bangalore especially. They are on the outskirts and, you know, uh, toward the airport and with a larger land parcel and all. So have you seen in this lockdown uh, uh, as a Godrej properties, have you seen in the shift that people, uh, there used to be always people used to be focusing on the having the apartment near to the uh, city center or where there is all facilities are available, where they are compromising on the uh, square footages, but they wanted to be near to the city center. Or now they are focusing or going away from the city center and having a bigger apartment because they have to do work from home or they have to focus on, you know, having a good lifestyle. What you have seen that shift in the current scenario? So over a period of time, that's a very good question. And uh, we, we do get these questions from a lot of our customers who keep asking us whether it makes sense uh, to buy a larger unit at this point in time or not. Uh, we have seen a little bit of consumer trend shifting towards a little higher units or a bigger sized apartments. Uh, not, I wouldn't, it's too early for us to basically comment on whether they are, they are wanting to have, a, you know, a, a, a additional, uh, you know, work office space room as, as a room there. And I think most of the developers, uh, developers are still contemplating on whether our in, internal design should include an office space or not that's too early uh, you know uh, to to comment on that but i we do see a shift on people do are considering um, if if we buy a larger apartment or a large, larger size unit uh, where are we going to have a small desk and a chair so that you know we can if if need be we can work from home yeah we are so seeing that shift. and so one of the questions that i just wanted to answer here i think people also have a confusion on or or probably a couple of questions that i have gotten that is this 1090 a bank subvention or a builder subvention? This this 1090 is a builder subvention and it is not a bank subvention. So I wanted to answer that as well. Okay, no, no, I was going to come to that question, but yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for uh, clearing that, that, that there is a, you are, you as a Godrej properties are considering for the uh, future that, you know, to have a small office space and uh, people can work from home as well. So that's uh, really good appreciate. And of course, uh, uh, I have, uh, uh, Sajai has covered the, how things happened and why Godrej and why do it. But now uh, next three to five years, uh, either Sajai or Pravi, whoever want to answer this, what do you think how the Indian real estate uh, uh, in terms of growth we going to see? Because in last few years, we have, as we said, it's a stagnant growth. So how do you uh, say that in next three to five years, what kind of appreciation we should expect from Indian real estate, especially the Bangalore market as well? I think uh, both me and Sajay should give our uh, viewpoints. Sajay can give the uh, is research viewpoint and honestly, I will give you a gut that uh, gut feel that I have. So yeah. while Anorak has got a lot of research uh, going behind it and they'll be able to give you a very uh, researched uh, thought behind it. My guess is absorption levels have surpassed uh, supply levels quite dramatically in the last few years. Okay. And uh, at this point of time, unsold inventory is not... Uh, uh, is not is completely manageable as far as developers are concerned. There's a yeah. huge amount of consolidation that's happened in the last two years. I expect yeah. a lot more in the next two years. So you will yeah. see a lot of uh, large developer, big uh, corporate houses holding uh, most of this uh, foray. I mean, uh, large corporate houses have a huge amount of cash surplus. They can venture into this business. They can buy out a lot of small developers. A lot of small developers that are struggling with cash flows or with the fact that they need to meet regulations that have uh, now come in, ensuring uh, consumer protection. Uh, a lot of them would want to move out of the industry, move into other avenues. And uh, once that consolidation happens, I think real estate prices are bound to start uh, rebounding back. And all that inflatory, inflatory prices that have been held on for a long time, I'm going to surely see it rise up. And we're probably one of those destinations where people still need a home. We're yes. not. Uh, we're not. We're not one of those countries where an average uh, 
home ownership is 1.5 or 2 or even 3 per, uh, three homes per uh, person. We honestly don't even have a home per family right now. Correct. I think there are a lot of people who still need homes. There's a huge amount of demand. Uh, yeah. The honest thing was there was too much growth, too much supply that happened uh, very quickly, which yeah. took the prices high very quickly. So the yeah. growth in prices was actually quite sharp. One, one, but because of that happening, the demand kind of couldn't catch up. But now in the last few years, I think that has been rectified. And I see the next five years uh, to be very bullish as far as real estate is concerned. Excellent. 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 So, um, you know, uh, I think uh, I echo everything that uh, Praveen is saying, but I have a couple of points in this uh, regard. I think yeah. these are very logical points. Uh, one, uh, the first being that, uh, you know, India has you know, traditionally been the realm of unbranded developers. They've been mom and pop shops. Uh, they've been small fragmented players. Sure. I think the consumer is finally waking up to the fact that a branded product gives them, you know, or mitigates their construction risk, quality risk, and gives them consistency of product. Correct. That, I think, is the biggest game changer. With yeah. corporate houses getting into the make fray, uh, a lot of consolidation happening within the real estate community. What is going to happen is that the corporate houses are going to charge a premium for the kind of construction and product that they're going to deliver. They are not going to be, everyone is not going to be a corporate product, right? There are still going to be some unbranded players who are going to be around, traditional players. Yeah. But it's these corporate branded products which are going to command a premium. And that's where we are going to actually see the pricing benefit. That's where we are actually going to see the price escalating northwards. That's the first thing. Okay. The second thing is that India is a country built on demographic dividend. Yeah. Demographic dividend means we are a young country. There are lots of more youngsters, lots of more talent coming into the workforce. With this talent coming into the workforce, generating incomes, mm -hmm. there is going to be a surplus and of course, demand for homes. If wealth is being created, that wealth is going to get channelized into investment. True. And India, of course, Indians are sentiment driven for owning a home. True. Right? With, you know, and, and a lot of Indians have today learned that staying on rent during a lockdown period is not as beneficial as staying in your own home. Correct. Right? So therefore, there is going to be an automatic trajectory of migration towards buying sure. your own first home or buying a you know a second income uh, generating asset so therefore these two factors are going to figure out a lot in uh, you know actually the price is moving uh, you know northward and the first point which praveet has actually said which is that unsold inventory has come down we have actually started seeing sales overshadow sub new supply so there is going to come to an inflection point wherein prices are going to take on the normal supply demand uh, metric, which means that if demand is higher than supply, prices will increase. Correct. Correct. So if you look at it from a, a logical and a research point of view, this is what is going to happen over the next five years. So as Praveer has mentioned, um, we are definitely looking at prices inching northwards. We are definitely looking at prices moving upwards uh, over the next five years. COVID-19, the lockdown period, this economic fiasco that is going on is primarily a, a blip in this, um, I would say, in this year. As soon as we are out of it, you know, we will start seeing demand coming back with resurgence. And when that demand does come back, uh, there is going to be a lot of um, investment gain for those savvy investors who had invested when the chips were down. True, true. So basically, uh, basically, sorry, yeah, uh, there have been some private questions on uh, you know the pricing that we have around this area. Yeah, uh, I would just want uh, uh, if, if Praveer, uh, you know, on a, on a generic uh, terms, if he can share his views on why there are some people who feel that you know on on the area which is which is not Bangalore towards the airport, they feel that our prices are. Uh, a little over, uh, you know, some of the some of the other properties that they would be looking at. So, if you have any <laughs> inputs there, our prices are lower. They're saying they are, our That's prices true. are higher in in um, you know the areas like North Bangalore as compared to other developers in the surrounding areas. Correct. 
So any any inputs that you have there? So my, my honest opinion is uh, from a uh, from a brand point of view, what we offer in terms of security, safety, the way we've designed our projects is some some pro- a project like Aqua. The biggest USP of a project like Aqua is that specific micro market uh, has a shortage of water supply, and Aqua's entire theme is built around water. So they uh, we build a project which recycles water, which uses wastewater for uh, the gardens. So there is a lot of thought that goes into each of our project. And if you visit our project, you will realize that we do add a substantial value. Besides the fact that we're a brand and we offer that safety, security that Godrej comes along with Godrej, we do offer a lot of thought in our project, which is why we might be priced slightly higher and which is going to be the case with any branded developer. So we will not be priced very high compared to a Soba. They're a branded developer. We won't be very highly priced compared to any or in Mumbai for that matter compared to uh, Lodha or in NCR for that matter compared to DLF. So there are always these two or three branded developers who will be priced a little higher, but they will assure you a better quality. They will assure you a better product, uh, product and they will assure you the delivery that is expected from them. Which is why we will be slightly higher when you compare us to non-branded developers. But when you compare us to a similarly branded developer, which could be Prestige, Shoba in Bangalore, we would be priced very similar. No, I understand that totally. Yeah, it's it's a, the brand matter. And uh, it is uh, what I understand from the earlier question as well. There is a lot of consolidation is happening and happened. And uh, in the ne- coming time where Sajai also explained that only the corporate developers and the branded developers like Godrej is going to sustain in the market. So then the, it is just this is a transformation stage where prices are uh, coming up to the at the par level. Once we have only a, like a developer who are a grade A developer like Godrej, then prices will also similar to it. Uh, I totally agree with uh, Praveer in this line. But there is one more interesting question they have asked me uh, is that a Currently, there is everything means especially uh, people can't travel to India unless and until it's a family emergency or they have to travel in Vande Matram, which is not going to be possible. But ha- and this offer is just I understand is uh, hardly for now week or ten days uh, because of the lockdown is opening up everywhere slow and steady. So if anybody is want to get the benefit of this offer, how they can do it and uh, how can you explore that if they want to see particular apartment or their inventory, how the looks and feel and of the project, uh, how can we go about it? Uh, Parag, would you like to cover or Paravid, whoever? Sure. So, uh, so currently most of our, uh, most of our site visits are happening virtual. Uh, we, are, we are doing giving virtual tours to a client. I'll just, you know, explain you about uh, the entire life cycle of somebody who expresses an interest and to to somebody who books an apartment with us how we are dealing with it we start with our virtual tour uh, we go over all the project details the you know the layouts etc etc the we we share the, the you know the, the the pricing of you know the selected units uh, you know we have everything online wherein we share a payment gateway a gateway along with the application form uh, and and just to block a unit, they just have to use a payment gateway. They can use any international or domestic credit cards and make a payment as low as uh, just uh, Indian rupees, one lakh rupees, and to book uh, block and uh, block an apartment. And it's a very very seamless process. So now uh, we are almost gone 90, 95 percent digital in terms of uh, you know from booking to helping a customer do a POA in case he's not able to travel, uh, you know, back home to get the registration done, uh, getting the payment, getting the application done, um, uh, processing everything for the client. We have done almost 95, 98% we are, we are doing digitally. And I, in fact, I have come to know in, uh, uh, there are certain cities uh, you are talking with register office as well and to do the registration in Godrej office only. Uh, so, you know, the people had, don't have to travel to register office as well. So that kind of facilities also Godrej is offering and the Godrej can only offer such facilities because of their corporate and the brand they watch they are holding it. So yes, sir, that's excellent. I understand 1090 payment plan is not going to last forever. Uh, so whoever wants to take the benefit of this 1090, please uh, contact uh, the services for NRI or uh, uh, NROC Sajai's team in Dubai, uh, GCC market to understand and to close this thing. We can go through with you the whole product cycle end to end can be done sitting at their home. They don't have to come out of their home for any of this thing for a transaction. Uh, 
so thanks for everyone uh, parag praveer uh, sajay would you like to just give a final closing notes yeah so i i'll start i'll uh, start by thanking uh, meer uh, from services for nri uh, sajay from anarok uh, parag and samarth my colleagues uh, for joining us in the uh, webinar uh it's been it's been great doing these webinars uh, it's been great to keep uh, ensuring that economic activity continues by, and we do, do all of this uh, very safely working from home working remotely uh, working digitally we take our customers through the entire experience uh, online we try to do most of this online uh, and uh, and while we say all this we are hoping to meet personally meet soon uh, get over this uh, pandemic soon and it's it's not too far the vaccine is going to be found and we're going to get over this and economic activity will go to the usual but i think a lot that we've learned during this period is a lot can happen digitally and which is something that i feel is going to continue so i just want to thank you all for joining us uh, uh, thank you for conducting this uh, seminar for us sajay any words from you Yeah, thanks, uh, Praveer, for those uh, concluding remarks. Uh, thank you, Mihir. Uh, thanks, Parag. Uh, thanks, Samarth. Uh, you know, um, I think this was a very informative uh, session. Um, I do su suspect that there are lots uh, of more questions and queries that our uh, you, know, uh, you know attendees have. Uh, we will need to attend to all of them. So um, you know, please feel free to reach out to our relationship managers, either from Services for NRI in UK or. for anarok uh, in the gcc uh, region either of them are fine or even the godrej team um, which is parag and praveer's team uh, who are across regions uh, one of the things that one i need to uh, leave you with the, the last message is that um, you know investing in a downturn always uh, reflects uh, in in a growth market in the upturn so uh, what godrej has come out with what praveer has mentioned that this 9 1090 scheme is itself you know a boon for these times it will not uh, be there and prevalent during the next phase of launches um i think praveer and his team are extending this only till about 30th of june so one needs to take advantage of it uh, in the quickest and the shortest possible time uh, and both meher and my team are there to help you with it so all the best uh, and thank you once again thank you thank you parag thank you so much yeah thanks parag thank you thank you everyone thanks 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 thank you thank you everyone